What's up gang? It's Trip with Saving and Such here on YouTube and in this video I'm going to be going a little more in depth on planning a trip. I'm going to show y'all how I plan specifically a river trip using Google Earth or Google Earth Pro which is a little bit better which I'll talk about that in just a minute. But if y'all have missed it already the first planning video it was about just in general how to plan a trip and I did more, more specifically how to plan like a coastal trip and not actually mapping a route and tracking it and gauging the mileages and saving that stuff and making a map. So hope you all enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed already, subscribe. Join in on the fun. Always an adventure with sailing and such. Alright, let's get to it. When I'm mapping out a river trip, I know I'm going to be floating down the river from point A to point B. And I just like to get my mileages down and you know make a few marks of any landmarks that I may need to know and just check out for any obstacles in the river and sandbars and you know boat ramps and roads and houses and things like that just so I can be aware of my surroundings and if anything an emergency comes up I will you know I'll kind of have my bearings <clears throat> so it's a good way to familiarize yourself with the route you're going to be taking but it's also very useful to have in the event nothing bad does happen which is generally the case <laughs> But, as you can see, I've got different colors here, okay? Now, what I have different colors for is, you know, this is all within the same river, but as I, as I go down the river, you know, and make my map, I want to know, you know, where the landmarks are, you know, so something I can read my map by or, you know, judge my pace by. So, I, I change my colors each time I pass a notable landmark. Most of the time, it's going to be a bridge, like in this case. So... From our start point right here up in Bartow, I start in red at this bridge and go all the way to the next bridge. Then I change the colors and to the next bridge and so on and so forth all the way down the river. Now the reason that I do this is you know because whenever you pass a bridge, you know, that's a notable landmark that you're not going to miss. So whenever you pass it, you, know, you can have your mileage logged onto your map and say, okay, I just passed this bridge. I've gone such and such amount of miles. How do I go about making these? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's take, for example, we'll go down here and we'll do a little short one real quick just to show you. We'll do this last one right here. I'm toggling on and off over here. You can toggle all of them on and off as you wish uh, within the program. And now I'm using Google Earth Pro. You can get Google Earth, but then you can also upgrade for free to Google Earth Pro, which has a few more you know, interesting features. And of course it's free and it's basically the same thing. Uh, so why not? upgrade to the pro I think you get like better resolution and things like that and just a few more options which just make it more fun and easier to use for this last little jaunt we'll go up here to my ruler be sure I have the path uh, tab selected and I'm just gonna draw a little path all the way down the river it's you know it kinda takes a little bit of time whenever the river is twisty and turny but it's worth it sometimes you cut corners and it doesn't really matter uh, but of course, if you want to be technical, you can go really, 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 really small around the turns. But oftentimes, I don't. I'm not a complete perfectionist. So I go all the way down to my ending point, which is going to be right here at a place called Navigators, which is where we're ending. I've got 3.59 miles. So I'm just going to call that 3.6 miles there. And so I'll just click Save. It'll save this path, and I usually name it by the roads. So this is going to be 761. So 761 to Navigators. I'm not really sure how to spell it. Maybe maybe that's correct. To Navigators, and then also I put the mileage in here. Uh, you can go to the measurement, 3.59 miles. Let's call it 3.6 miles. So we'll go 3.6 miles and we will click OK. Now, whenever you make one of these, it sends it over here into your places. Now, in these places, this works just like the file folders on your computer. You can set up new folders, which I like to do. Uh, you can see I have a lot of different places where I've been and where I'd like to go on here. And so I will create a folder like the Peace River, 94 miles, there you go. So I'll create the folder, and then you can just drag this into the folder and it puts it well it puts it in the folder okay I don't know why does that that's P River trip let's, let's why don't we put it in the Peace River well anyways you can see it doesn't need to be there anyhow so let's just go ahead and delete this one 
Yes, we want to delete it. Because I've already dragged it, because I've already put it into my Peace River folder. You can see the folder right here. Peace River, here's all the waypoints from road to road, bridge to bridge, whatever you want to call it. And I have all my mileages for each one. So I know the distances between them all. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to change their colors, right? So that whenever I print the map out, wherever I'm looking at it, if they're all the same color, I can't tell where each section begins and ends. So I'll change the color. You can just go in here, let's see, how do we do it? Properties, maybe? Properties, style, color, and just change the color. We can change it to whatever we want. If we want it to be a little uh, doo doo green, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> you can change it to whatever you want to call it. Oh no! I just messed it up. Control, can I delete? Let's do this. Uh, and if you mess up, you can just mash delete. <laughs> And it cancels them. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. Goodness gracious. So you do that all the way down your river, wherever you're going to go. And it's pretty simple. And then you have a great little map system. So to make a new folder, just come in here, right click, click folder, name it whatever you want. We'll just do sailing and such. And it adds our folder, and you can place it wherever you want on top of stuff or somehow. Oop, don't want to put it in there. Oh boy. But you can, you can put it wherever you want to. Like if I want to put it, I don't know, under my places, boom, it comes in somewhere. Here it is, under my places, and you can move it up and down. Okay? So that's easy. Now we'll delete this folder. Boom. And so whenever you delete your folder, you can, of course, enlarge it, open it up, see everything in it, and put your new pass in there. Now, not only can you put paths in there, but you can add little cool things like their place marks or markers. Go up here, add a place mark. Let's call, let's just for fun call this the start. And we can make it a cool little picture if we want to, like to start, I don't know, we can make it a flag or a cool volcano or a rock slide or something. Let's, uh, let's make it this. This is going to be very exciting whenever we start our trip. So we'll make it that. That's the start. You can change the color of it. You can change like the size of it and stuff. Uh, right here, the scale. That's a label and the icon scale. And you can just put those all down your path. You can also put those into the folder. So you've got your start. And let's say we're going to camp somewhere. I think a good campsite would be like right here. This, this would just be perfect. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, look how fast my computer is going today. My internet connection is. Let's say we want to make another place mark. Place it here. Let's say it's going to be our camp. Camp. And we'll call it camp number one. The first night of should be four, three nights, I think. Maybe four if, if we run into trouble. Or we're having too much fun. So there, you can place those all the way down it within everything. And you'll have those to reference to while you're going down the river. Now, so once you get all of your paths done, I like to take these and make them into individual maps or make maps out of them. So what I'll do, I'll go up here and I'll take my little sidebar off. And I'll make it kind of full screen. And I'll start kind of taking snapshots of this. Like I'll generally take one of the whole thing. So we'll go here, take a photo. Isn't this it? Save image. Save image. And when you use uh, Google Earth Pro, all this cool stuff comes up. You can title your map and call it the Peace River Trip. And we can go here and just say... Uh, incredible fun will be had by all there you go say we can name it and then we go over here and we've got our legend uh, I guess you can toggle that off and on whatever feature is we can just call it trips cool trip is cool you know something you know, you know if you want to spice it up a little bit <laughs> you can put that stuff on there and share the map with the world but no. But anyways, you can do that and then go up here, 
you can select your resolution. So let's let's just let since we're going to be uh, printing it, let's just let's just click maximum, and then we'll save it to our files. And then you can make a folder, and I've got a little Google Earth folder that I just made. So let's call this test, and we'll call it uh, HQ. This is the highest quality image. Uh, image is being prepared. It may take a minute. Oh, my goodness. Okay, why don't we cancel that? <laughs> That's too big of a quality. Let's just try this UHD. That'll work. That'll work. Let's just let's call it test HQ. Really? Come on, people. All right, that's too big too. Heck with that. Let's just go with 19. Save image. Maybe this will be better. There we go. That's a little more feasible. If you're not very patient like I am, and let it's still taking a minute. Stop at 83 percent. Pause the video. So once you save your file, then I take it to something you can use Paint or a program similar to that. I use something called GIMP. Uh, it's free to download. and You can go in there and you can edit the photo. I'm not going to go into all that mess. That's a totally different animal. Uh, but you can make your own maps and you can just print them out. Or, or you can just go up here and you can just smash print and it will print it out. Although, although the quality may not be exactly what you want. But also in GIMP you can size it you know differently and you can add uh, like I usually go in and on GIMP I will add my actual mileages and things to it so you can do a lot of different stuff with the GIMP or you can just print them off of here and write on it with a pen if that's what you, that's what you would prefer to do. Something else to note is you know whenever you're referencing these maps you know you need to check the timestamp right down here on all Google images or Google satellite view photos you can see the year it was done 2016 and something cool you can do where is it at right here I believe you can go to the historical imagery which works when your internet connection is really good but I'm kind of far away from my router and you can just you can change it and it will take you to different times to different years when the images were taken you can kind of compare them so it's really pretty cool uh, just kind of a little fun thing to do it may not really be extremely useful whenever you're actually planning a trip because you, of course you want to see the current things but you know it's fun to see like how sandbars have changed and things like that <clears throat> but and also you know you can change you can see kind of what the water does if you're on a river in like times of flood and you can see if the images you're looking at are normal because like one thing I noticed about these is there's an awful lot of water you know it looks like there's a lot of water in places kind of like this this river, it looks like you know, there's a lot of water everywhere. Uh, and, of course, I don't know the river. I'm not familiar with it. Is there always water, you know, all around these edges and sides? I don't know. But I took a look at the historical imagery, which I may not be able to show you. But I, I believe that that stuff isn't normally underwater. See, this is so aggravating. <laughs> I know everyone deals with slow internet problems, but here's mine. But one thing I noticed is that it appeared that these satellite images were taken during a flood time. So I don't think there's always water this high because one thing I was like getting kind of excited about was like in certain spots there were like little shortcuts I could take. I was like, oh, wouldn't that be awesome? You know, if we could take this shortcut. Oh, wouldn't that be sweet? You know, that'll be fun. Do a little, little extra exploring. Maybe, you know, risk a little bit. Maybe get lost or something. Like all these little bitty trails to check those out, like this right here. Wouldn't that be a cool little shortcut if it was possible? And playing on all these, but I realized that that may not be possible. That could just be where the water flows when the river is flooded. But like this one, that would be cool. You know, that'd be an easy one, and it would cut off a chunk of the river. But I'm still going to take note of these and maybe get lucky whenever we go on the trip. So what what I'll probably do, I'll just I'll go down the river <clears throat> and look at my maps, and I'll note these, and I'll kind of note them on the maps because what I'll do when I print out my maps of course I print out the one big map to kind of see the whole thing or maybe even two and then I'll come down and I'll print out a map for each section or depending on how big the section is and the shape I might print out you know two sections like you know that that'd be pretty cool to print that out and you can kind of follow yourself along a little bit 
you know, because I like to, as I go down the, the river, I don't really use my GPS because the first trip I brought the GPS on was my last trip. But I, I like to kind of, you know, okay, I'm turning left, a real sharp left with a sharp right, you know, and stuff like that. I, I like kind of doing that and thinking about it as I'm going down the river so I kind of know where I'm at. I know, I know which bend I'm in. It's just kind of a fun little challenging thing to do. And also, if you get used to doing that, you know, if you go down somewhere uh, and you're in trouble, you lose your kayak or something, you know, it's good to know a general idea where you are because you can get on your map and say, okay, there's a house here. Okay, there's a road. All right, if I go this way, it's a long way. But, you know, like if you're, if you're wrecked right here, if you go this way, uh, it's a pretty long way to the road or, you know, that way, but it's a lot quicker just to go boop to the road. So it's good to always know where you're at. Of course, the GPS is handy for that too. But you don't always have one. And what if it fails? <clears throat> just in case you missed my other trip planning video here on Google Earth, I want to remind you guys about all this really cool stuff over here. Things like photos you can en you can enable. And a lot of times, see photos will show up. You can check out the river. Well, where'd they go? Need a faster internet connection. But you can see the different photos of the river. Fun on the Peace River. Yeah, they're having a good time. I remember doing almost that exact thing when I was a kid. <laughs> but you got all these cool spots. You can kind of see what the river looks like. So it's, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. So those photos are always fun to look at. You can kind of, you know, gauge the width of the river, maybe even the speed of the water a little bit. If it's, you know, really, really slow, you'll be able to tell. Or if it's really nasty, or if it's a good spot to swim, or... I don't know, it's just always fun. Like, look, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous right here. Cannot wait to do the Peace River. Cannot wait to paddle the Peace River with, what is the name of the people? Not the people. Wow. Yeah, that looks, <laughs> that looks fun. I know, I, I talked to the guy who's putting on the, the trip, and he's, he's already paddled the whole thing. He said he didn't really run into problems quite like this, which is good. Which is great because actually, I don't know, that would be fun. That would be fun. That would make for a fun, fun video. It should be a great trip with Operation Outdoor Freedom and four of our United States Wounded Warriors. I think we have like three males and maybe a female going. Uh, one of the guides is uh, a former American Gladiator contestant, which is pretty awesome because I've been watching that show as a kid. Uh, but it should be a really, really fun trip, and it should make for some great video. Just think of what I can do in five days, four days of video. But I really cannot wait. Cannot wait. So, anyways, that is how I set up a river trip. It's pretty darn simple. Uh, and, you know, I know someone's going to ask, well, how do you find campsites? Well, when I go down the river, you know, I just kind of stop wherever I see a campsite. Uh, most of the time, you know, I just paddle until it's getting you know time to set up camp and I start looking for a great spot and I'll just pull over and stop uh, you know but if I you know sometimes I'll get on here and I'll find some cool spots that may be I don't know usually only a sandbar is what I've found online so far and I've been like oh look at that huge sandbar looks like a pretty cool place to camp and I camped on it that was on the Choctahatchee River uh, so you know you can you know you don't really plan your your, your campsites, you know, unless, of course, you're going somewhere that has designated campsites. Like, I know the Peace River, it does have a few designated campsites down it. Uh, and so you could, you know, find those online, mark them on here, you know, drop yourself a place marker wherever the campsite is so you'll know where it's at on the map. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And now you know a little bit more on how to plan your own adventure so you can actually plan one and actually go and have some adventure. Because everyone needs a little adventure, right? I know I do. So get out there and have your own adventure. If you have any questions or any comments about this video, maybe how you plan your trips or a little tip for me or a tip for everyone else, share them in the comments. And hey, a lot of times you learn a lot by reading the comments. I know I do. So go check out the comments below. Leave one yourself if you haven't already. Go check out sailingandsuch.com and join us on Facebook if you haven't already. We have a little bit of fun over there. Sometimes a little giveaways and stuff. So hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and go watch some adventure videos and have some fun, okay? If you're not having fun, you must be doing it wrong. Right? <laughs> that's, 
That, that's right about 99% of the time. Because <laughs> sometimes you can be doing it right and you just get in a bad position. Like we all have. Okay? But it's fun. And it's better if you get it on video. So get it on video like I have. Alright. Thank y'all for watching. God bless. Always an adventure, baby.